So what are my thoughts on this Oreo versus statin study? Oreo cookies, there was a study, this guy did this study where he was also the investigator as well as the subject of the study where he decided to eat Oreos and that lowered his LDL cholesterol. This is LDL cholesterol, if you don't know, with the ApoB blue molecule on it. He lowered his LDL cholesterol by 70%. There was a washout period and then he took a statin medication, a pretty potent one, rosuvastatin 20, and then he only reduced his um, LDL cholesterol by about 30%. So what are my thoughts? I'm a cardiologist, board certified cardiologist. You guys have probably been following me for a while. What does a cardiologist think of this? So first of all, on the outset, this was not an ordinary subject. He was on a ketogenic diet, very strict keto. And in him, that diet increased his LDL cholesterol to astronomic levels. It was over 400. Most people on a keto diet depending on how they do it, and even no matter how strict they are, will generally not have a that malignant of an LDL cholesterol rise. Most people, about 30 to 40% of people, will have a rise in their LDL cholesterol, but not to those astronomic levels. We'll get to that part later. Um, but he did, and we'll talk about why that may be the case. He had an astronomic rise in his cholesterol. He, he decided to add carbohydrates to his diet um, in the form of 12 uh, Oreo cookies a day, about 100 grams of carbs, maybe something like that. Over time, that dropped his LDL cholesterol back down by about a 70% uh, decrease, which is very significant, obviously. He had a washout period, went back up to 400 with his LDL, back on his diet, and then took rosuvastatin 20, which for most people drops your cholesterol by about 35, maybe up to 55%, depending on the person. In his case, it dropped at about 30%. So he's a little bit resistant to the statin which could mean a lot of different things. There's all kinds of genetic factors involved in that. Might have a high lipoprotein A, um, a few other things. We don't know. We don't know his genetics. I'm just going off of what he's posted and what he said. He did post in some other um, article that he might have some genetic mutations involved with lipid metabolism. I don't know for certain, but people have tagged me in some of those um, journals. But either way, how is this even possible? So the, uh, Alan Aragon, if you guys know Alan Aragon, he goes by the handle The Alan Aragon. He wrote one of my favorite uh, weight loss books called Flexible Dieting. Check it out. It's, his name is at The Alan Aragon. Um, he asked me to do a roundtable discussion with him and a few other people that are know a lot about the science behind this into what could possibly have caused this and how does it work. So I brought up a few cases. Mayo Clinic wanted to test this exact theory of these, they call themselves lean mass hyperresponders. This gentleman who did this study, his name is Nick. He, he considers himself a lean mass hyperresponder. These are people who qualify themselves saying their HDL is above 80, um, triglycerides are under 80, maybe something like that. And then his LDL is, um, I think over 200. They call themselves lean mass hyperresponders. Not all of them are lean, but it turns out at the leaner they are, in some cases, their LDL goes up more. And the Mayo Clinic confirmed this. The Mayo Clinic did a study where they said, you know what, let's look at this and see what's actually going on here. See if there really is this thing called lean mass hyperresponder and figure out why on earth this is happening or what is the actual physiology or genetics behind this. So they went back through all of their records and it's an EMR. They use Epic, I'm assuming, and it's super easy to find the words like keto, statin, you know, high LDL cholesterol. So they sorted people by LDL cholesterol as being somewhat normal and then skyrocketing. And then they looked for the word keto in their records. They found 17 such patient, patients. And in these 17 patients, he looked at the trends of their LDL uh, cholesterol. And they found that once they adopted a ketogenic diet, their cholesterols did skyrocket. Now, not to the extent that Nick's did, the Oreo guy, um, but five of them did. Five of them turned out to have some... Um, familial hypercholesterolemia type cholesterols. And then two of them, they tested They tested about five of them for genetic abnormalities to see if maybe there's something going on there genetically because some of them had like insanely high responses to eating uh, a ketogenic diet. Two of them turned out to have mutations in their LDL receptor genetics. This is one, this is an LDL receptor. So if you have, let's say this is an LDL, the low density lipoprotein, here's the receptor on the liver in the bloodstream, LDL receptor comes by, it grabs it and pulls it in and eliminates it. The LDL receptor, if it's not working and it's not functioning correctly, you may have a case where it's not grabbing and pulling out all of the LDL particles. And that's why they have a severe reaction because if, the, if your diet causes a malfunction of the particle that's supposed to clear LDL, that is what happens. So they had a number of theories. One of them that those two people had this severe, maybe not severe, but it had a genetic mutation that 
miss you know the LDL receptor just doesn't work there's lots of reason for it sometimes they're insulin sensitive sometimes not that's why carbohydrate intake sometimes affects LDL receptors in people with these um, specific genetics now this lean mass hyperresponder study that these guys did they spent about four or five years recruiting participants that fit into this lean, ma lean mass hyperresponder category they only found about 80 such people uh, in the world so this is not you all these people are like well i have high cholesterol i'm gonna eat core oreo cookies no 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 this is not you even the guy who did the study nick says please do not eat oreos it's not going to fix your cholesterol problems right he said don't do this at home this was just a study um, like an experiment he knew this was his genetics there's another guy named dave um, who has similar genetics i listened to his uh, podcast on peter atia's podcast he has these same kind of genetics where he could manipulate his LDL by how much saturated fat he eats or not eats, how lean he gets, how much carbohydrates he adds. He can almost pretty much affect his LDL in that way. So there are some people with these specific genetics, but this, like I said, is not you and this is not what we're recommending uh, for everyone. So the Mayo Clinic postulated that the reason for this was obviously some kind of odd uh, genetics, especially in those four or five people and especially the two that they checked because two of them absolutely had this LDL receptor issue. Um, the, the, the hypothesis is and, and people have, you know, gone back and forth trying to figure this out. There were other studies done. There was another subject case, actually, a 38-year-old male who had a similar response. He had an LDL cholesterol somewhere in the 119 to 130 range, adopted a ketogenic diet, diet skyrocketed, I think, like to 396 in his case, which they were like, whoa, this is a hyper-responder. How did this guy, just eating more saturated fat, have such a high response to, uh, you know, uh, carbohydrates? They've, they've gone back and uh, I think they're doing more testing on that gentleman. I, I can't remember the full details of that study, but I discussed it in Alan Aragon's um, roundtable discussion. If you want his uh, stuff, follow him. Um, one of the theories is that when you put your body into a state of semi-starvation, when you're not eating carbohydrates, which is the preferred fuel choice for your body, you are putting your body into semi-starvation mode. And when you go into semi-starvation mode, you're eating mostly only fat, right? Your, the fat is stored in chylomicrons. Chylomicrons are sort of like LDL particles, but they come out of your intestines. They absorb all the cholesterol, the fat, the triglycerides, which are fatty acids. Um, the fat that you eat ends up you know, being in these. On the inside, the yellow is the saturated, uh, the yellow is the cholesterol, and the turquoise is the saturated fats. So that's what that looks like. These are used to traffic energy in the form of fatty acids, or like this fat that you eat. So when you put your body in a state of ketosis or semi-starvation you will absorb more fat than you need um, and your blood markers will go up because you are telling your body that i am starving i need energy this is how it traffics energy literally this is the the, the role of chylomicrons chylomicrons um, get absorb fat they go up into your lymphatic system go into your thoracic duct and go to muscle tissue first muscles need energy they go to muscles feed muscles and then if there's any extra they go to fat tissue and store the fat as fat in your fat tissue or adipocytes fat fat cells whatever you want to call it so that's the role of actual lipoproteins their job is to traffic energy traffic calories traffic fat to muscles that need it or for storage in uh, fat tissue if needed so part of the theory is maybe these people are like chronically starving and they just need more energy in their body's absorbing more energy as soon as they see the preferred glucose which your body prefers glucose prefers sugars prefers carbs as the energy source as soon as your body sees some of that it can reduce this because it doesn't need it as much and it's toxic to us this is toxic to humans the cause of atherosclerosis is ldl cholesterol this has been proven now by a multitude of studies the most recent publication by brian ference showed with over 20 million data points that ldl cholesterol absolutely without question causes atherosclerosis so when you now eat carbs your body no longer needs energy from this and these can drop so that's the theory uh there you're semi-starved malnourished you need energy and a lot of people are like really really lean like very very low body fat percentages so they are technically really starving um so they need all the energy that they can get and this is one way um, that they are getting it so that's the theory there now statin medications generally will lower your ldl but if your body is starving for energy and needs it it's not going to come down as much no matter how much statin you you give yourself statin blocks cholesterol synthesis but not absorption my guess is if they probably took something like zetia which is that what the case study did the case study the 38 year old male with the high elevation actually took zetia which blocks absorption uh, of cholesterol that that person's ldl cholesterol actually came down 
more than what we normally would see with Zetia. He had a 65% reduction in uh, LDL cholesterol. Zetia normally causes a 10 to 15, maybe 20%, maybe 25 at the most uh, percent reduction in LDL cholesterol, but he had a 65% reduction. So that explains that. The body was overabsorbing cholesterol because it needed it, needed calories, needed energy. This was a way to block that. So he only took Zetia and that's what happened, which is really, really rare. Uh, as well, if you understand lipid metabolism and how all the medications work, you understand that part of it. So definitely an interesting study. I don't know that it adds much to the body of evidence. No one is going to suggest eating uh, Oreo cookies uh, for that. I mean, that's just nonsense. That would be uh, horrible advice. Uh, but one thing that some people pointed out that's interesting is that even if you eat ultra, all this does is disprove this whole ketogenic carnivore crowd because they found that even they themselves have found the carnivore people, the keto people, that if you eat even ultra processed carbs like Oreo cookies, super ultra processed, even eating ultra processed carbs causes a reduction in LDL uh, cholesterol. Now, I will mention that he did not reduce his saturated fat intake. He kept his saturated fat intake the same, kept his fat intake the same. He ate the carbs in addition to his saturated fat, which I think was smart because people would argue then, well, he ate the extra 100 grams of carbs but took out 100 grams of fat he did not he stuck with his current diet and just added carbs uh to it so either way however you want to argue it no one is recommending that you actually do this but it is definitely an interesting um study like i said i don't know the significance of it probably not going to change a whole lot even sean baker and some of the other carnivores were like eh. you know if you are a carnivore and your ldl cholesterol is high Try adding carbs. If it doesn't work, take some medications. No big deal. So even the staunchest of carnivores, the original carnivores, even Paul Saladino, who I debated on here, you can watch that on YouTube. They all, you know, he says the same thing that you know, without question, LDL cholesterol is involved in atherosclerosis. He's not sure if it starts atherosclerosis or if it's just heavily involved. Obviously, the data shows from the cardiology community that it is the actual cause of atherosclerosis. But even he started adding maple syrup and fruit and those kind of things back into his diet. Um, and you'll notice a lot of these folks, the original carnivores are adding more, you know, sugars and carbs back into their diets uh, because it's just a very intolerable, difficult diet. I don't ever recommend people do a diet that's difficult to stay on or, you know, has lots of rules and restrictions. Grab my actual weight loss book. Uh, click on my links, you can find it. It's just called Actual Weight Loss. Search anywhere, you'll find it. Um, but actual weight loss, we talk about the science behind all this and how to lose weight while eating a maintainable, sustainable diet. You can crash diet with one of these things if you want to, but ultimately you have to switch to something. I always tell people, don't do a diet that you can only do for 10 minutes if you can't do it for 10 decades. Don't do a diet for 10 days or 10 months if you can't do it for 10 years or 10 decades. So um, that's all I got for you. Share this with people who are confused by the Oreo statin uh, study. Um, this is what a cardiologist thinks about it, double board certified cardiologist, um, writing a book on cholesterol so you can kind of understand all this stuff even more. Always click on my links, follow me, and you'll find out when that book is being released. See you in the next episode.